This is a solution to question eight on the disjunction elimination practice sheet. What we're trying to derive is the sentence not, not A and not B. And we're trying to derive that from the one primary assumption A or B. Now let's begin by just planning our strategy here on the right hand side. Let's notice that we have only one primary assumption, A or B. And what we're trying to derive is the negation of a sentence. Now, the sentence that we're trying to derive doesn't appear anywhere in the primary assumptions as a component of those assumptions. So we're going to have to use an introduction rule because we won't be able to get it from the primary assumptions by using an elimination rule. And since the sentence we're trying to derive is the negation of some sentence, in other words, the primary or the main logical connective is the tilde, we're going to have to use the negation introduction rule. So already that tells us that what we're going to have to do is start with not A and not B and try to derive some sentence and its negation down here inside the subderivation. And then if we can do that, then we'll be able to write not, not A and not B by negation introduction. And we don't know yet what sentence we're going to derive here in its negation, but we can probably guess that since we've got not A and not B in a conjunction here, and we have A and we also have B in the disjunction, probably trying to get A and also not A or get B and also not B will work. So now that we have our strategy, let's try to move forward by taking a couple of steps that we already know are a good way to begin. So the first thing we're going to do is, of course, begin a secondary assumption, not A and not B. And this is going to be an assumption for the purposes of negation introduction. Now, because we're hoping to be able to derive a sentence in its negation underneath our secondary assumption here, it's probably a good idea to just get not A and not B right away by themselves from line two by conjunction elimination. Now, if we look at where we are in our derivation, we see that if we're going to have any hope at all of deriving a sentence and its negation underneath our secondary assumption, that's line two, we're going to have to use disjunction elimination on line one. So indeed, the next thing to do here is to assume A for the purposes of disjunction elimination. And what we notice is that it might actually be easy to get A from both of the disjuncts. We can certainly get A from A, that's really easy, because all we have to do is reiterate. So that comes from line five by reiteration. And now our challenge is to see if we can somehow get A also from B which is going to be an assumption for disjunction elimination. Now, what really might help here is, again, to notice a pattern that we've seen many, many times before now. And the pattern is that we have B here on line 7 and not B on line 4. And not B is actually accessible to us in the subderivation that is beneath the letter B on line 7. In other words, the things that are in line 5 and 6, these are no longer accessible to us. These are, as it were, as one of you said, off limits. So down here in the subderivation below B, we can't use the letter 
A from either line 5 or line 6. But we can use anything in lines 1, 2 if we wanted to, 3, and 4. And that's enough for us to get A because once we have B and not B like that, one above the other, we can use them in either a negation introduction or a negation elimination. So the next step to take here then is simply to assume the negation of A It's an assumption for the purpose of negation elimination. Because now I can write down B and not B. B comes from line 7 by reiteration and not B comes from 4 by reiteration. And with all of that, I can derive A from 8 through 10. by negation elimination. So now what I've done is kind of interesting because I have derived A from the disjunct A and A from the disjunct B. And that means that I can infer A. And that comes from lines 5 through 6 and lines 7 through 11 by disjunction elimination. And now what I notice is that beneath my secondary assumption, not A and not B on line 2, I have both not A and A. I have a sentence and its negation. So I can introduce my negation to write not, not A, and not B, and that comes from lines 2 through 12 by negation introduction.